the Rolling Stones kicking off, kicking off this hour on BBC Radio Wales with Start Me Up. Now then, I'd like your thoughts on this, please. Is it ever appropriate to ask a Muslim woman to remove her veil? The Prime Minister, David Cameron, has said he will give his backing to public authorities like schools and courts that put in place proper and sensible rules to ban women from wearing face veils, but went on to say he did not support a nationwide ban on full face coverings. I want to know what you think. Is it ever appropriate to ask a Muslim woman to remove her veil? Call me on 03700 100 110 or you can text the programme on 81012. Now in a moment we'll be hearing from Mohammed Ansar, political and social commentator. But first, um, I'd like to talk to Dave Atherton, uh, a libertarian and author at Breitbart, a news and opinion website. Um, hello, Dave. Hi, how are you doing, Doc? I'm very well. Now then, this is all over the papers this morning, um, and it's uh, well, it's made us ask this question: Is it appropriate to ban Muslim women from wearing a veil in some circumstances? In some circumstances, to be sure. Um, walking down the street, certainly not. On public transport, probably not, but somewhere, somewhere, somewhere like the bank, uh, if you go to the airport, and maybe children in school, and certainly the teachers should not be should not be wearing veils. Um, maybe maybe hijab, but certainly in a cab or a burqa, I think it's totally inappropriate for um, uh, for w- w- women to be wear- wearing. So David Cameron has said um, it, it's public places, and isn't it? Well, it's not public places. It's actually he's talking about schools and courts and places like yeah, that. Of course, th- absolutely in court. You know, you know, it, 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 you know it, it, if, 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 if a Muslim Muslim woman is giving evidence, um, you know, the the barrister who is questioning or cross examining the person should be allowed to see their facial reaction and their body language and how they're coming across, whether they're actually sort of misleading or, or whether they think they're telling the truth. And things like that. I think that's entirely appropriate and entirely, entirely right to, to, to demand that uh, face coverings are taken off in court. Doesn't it? I mean, the question is here. It's it's about a woman's right, isn't it, to, to choose? Doesn't it strip a Muslim woman of her right to choose to wear the veil or not? Well, indeed, but, but you know, there's lots of things that we that we, that we that we can and can't wear in public, either by law or by or by uh, what's the word? What's the word I'm looking for? Um, Society doesn't believe that that to be true. But where it's a matter of security, where it's a matter of the truth, where it's a matter of presentation, um, there are some appropriate uh, you know, situations where, when, when face covering should be banned. You know, certainly going about your day-to-day, day-to-day business, on, you know, walking down the street, um, on the bus, getting, the tube, jump, getting on the train. No, I, certainly as a libertarian, I, I would not like to see any laws like that passed. I think it's appropriate in security situations like airports, ferries, the bank and in course of law where, where it would be appropriate to, to, to ban face covering. We've heard that former Conservative chairman, uh, Baroness Varsi, she said the Prime Minister here, uh, well, he's guilty of stereotyping communities. Is she right? Uh, stereotyping? The only people I know who, 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 wear, who wear face coverings are, are people of, of Muslim heritage. You know, I, you know, people have said that, yeah, nuns, you know, nuns, um, you know, do cover their faces to a certain extent, but there aren't, there aren't that many nuns in this country. There aren't many sort of, you know, European women. There aren't many sort of people of, of, of African extraction um, who, who wear face coverings. It seems to be virtually entirely the Muslim community that are doing it. Um, and, so, and so, therefore, they're the people who would. You know, I'm pretty sure if, if Europeans started wearing face coverings, you know, for example, if I went to the post office or the bank in a balaclava, I'd be asked yeah. to take off, wouldn't I? Yeah, that's you would. But, so. but that's that's different. Isn't it? Why, why is it different? It's you know, diff- you know, you know, if, you know, if, you know th- there are signs and banks. If you're a motorcycle courier, you have to take your crash helmet off and your balaclava. But that's not a. Cu- that's you're not allowed a- to enter, enter the bank. But that's not. But that's not the reasons for wearing it, isn't it? That's not a cultural or, or a religious wearing uh, reason for wearing it, is it? That is totally different. Well, we, know, we, 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 we are we are a Judeo-Christian com- country. And you know, this is sort of, you know two thousand years of history in this country where, where women are not expected to cover their faces up. Why should why should, why should the majority of the population have to fit in with a minority a minority of the, of the population? I'd like your thoughts on this as well because David Cameron he's announced that tens of thousands of Muslim Muslim women, well, they could face deportation unless they pass a series of English language tests um, after coming to Britain on on spouse visas. What do you make of that? Um, on, on spells, they should, they should speak English. 
And I believe it's also, and face, um, what, it's face, also a... Face um, deportation if they don't. So you're saying fa- if they don't pass these English language no, tests, they no, should they, face they, deportation. They, 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 they shouldn't, shouldn't be allowed a passport, or maybe in a year or two's time, uh, maybe they have to revisit it. They're given, given, maybe given a temporary passport. But you, you know, you know, one of the, to integrate into this country, you have to speak English. If you want to get a job in this country, you have to speak English. If you want to, want to become a member of the community and interact with other people, you have to speak English. You know, for example, I speak some very basic French. I tend to go to French-speaking countries because at least I can make myself understood. You know, I tend to go to France, Belgium, Switzerland, places like that, so I can make myself understood in their own language. I tell you what, though, you could argue we're in Wales. Does everybody need to learn Welsh then when they move to Wales? Uh, what percent? I think only, t- only 10% of the population in Wales speaks speaks. Speaks, it's uh, an official well, language. It's still an official well, you know, language. If, if, if the Welsh Assembly made this rule that you had to have a certain certain uh, grasp of the, of the Welsh language to pop across the border at Newport, I'd probably I'd probably be up for that. You'd be up for that. Yeah. Okay yeah. then. Well, Dave, thank you for joining us this morning. Thank Love you. your thoughts on uh, what Dave Atherton had to say there, the libertarian and author at Breitbart. Uh, what do you think of this? 03700 100 110. Coming up after this, I'll be speaking to the political and social commentator, Mohammed Ansar, to hear his views. But I do want to know what you think. Is it ever appropriate to ask a Muslim woman to remove her veil? Call me on 03700 100 110. Pointer Sisters with I'm So Excited here on BBC Radio Wales. Well, we've been talking about whether it's ever appropriate to ask a Muslim woman to remove their veil. The Prime Minister, David Cameron, has said he will give his backing to public authorities like schools and courts that put in place proper and sensible rules to ban women from wearing face veils. Uh, I'll be joined by Mohammed Ansar, um, political and social commentator, very shortly, but I just want to get uh, to some of your messages on this. You've been getting in touch on the text 81012. Uh, this one's anonymous, um, who says, Hi there, I think personally that the burqa should be banned in public like in France. No disrespect, but facing the terrorism going on in the world, how will you be able to identify who the person you are looking at is if she's even female? That's from an anonymous, anonymous texter. Um, this from James uh, in the Ronda, who says, Why should it matter to anyone what another person is wearing? Should we also tell nuns that they are not allowed to wear the religious headwear? Keep those texts coming in, eight. 10 12 or call us 03700 100 110 and on the line now is William in Swansea. Hi William. Afternoon Doug. Hi uh, where do you stand on this then? Well first of all um, speaking to your colleague um, I, I'm, uh, uh, I'm an atheist and I detest all religion uh, full stop but um, there is a precedent um, uh, with regards to what we're talking about about um, the unveiling particularly on official lines when you're dealing with something which is official and Jack Straw, the Home Secretary at the time in his constituency in Blackburn, he would would not deal with uh, any of his constituents who insisted on uh, keeping their veil on you know, and I go along with that absolutely com- uh, completely, um, what they do in their public life uh, walking down the road in their homes or whatever that's fine, no problem but dealing with anything uh, official, surely you, you must be able to uh, to see the faces uh, of somebody that um, you were dealing with. So you agree with, with what the Prime Minister is saying here, that he'll give his backing here? To like, You were talking public authorities, like in schools and courts, yes. it's yes. rules yes. that will ban women yes. from wearing face veils. Doesn't it concern yes. you about their rights at all? Well, they have their rights anyway. You know, um, the, sa- the same as I've got my rights. Um, with regards to the previous caller, with regards to nuns wearing their headdress, well, that's completely irrelevant because they're mm. open. You yeah. know, um, uh, you can see the person that you're dealing with. You know, it's as simple as that, you know. OK, William, thank you very much for phoning 03700 100 110. Keep those calls coming in. Uh, I'd love to know if you think it's appropriate to ask a Muslim woman uh, to remove her veil. Uh, I want to bring in Mohammed Anza here, a political and social commentator. Good afternoon, Mohammed. Good afternoon. What was your reaction to this now then? There's some, there seems to be something every day, but this is the latest. Um, David Cameron has said he'll give his backing to, to public authorities, schools and courts, um, to, to ban women from wearing face veils. Yeah, I think that it's interesting because we've got the measures which um, he's brought in a bit more generally in, in, in terms of how he wants to tackle Muslim radicalization and extremism. And I think those have met with 
um, real consternation from communities. People are really concerned about the direction of travel for David Cameron and the government and its credibility around tackling radicalisation and extremism. I think then as part of that debate, then we've got something which is very much centred around Muslim women and Muslim mothers. What we saw um, yesterday was a real targeting of Muslim migrant women, non-EU women as well in particular. So we're talking about ethnic minorities or probably globally ethnic majorities, but, but women coming from uh, Muslim-majority countries who'd be coming here who are being asked essentially to uh, learn English or you can be deported. And this is at a time when the government have uh, closed down or, or, or restricted the uh, English uh, language courses and, and lessons which can be done and I think it was something like a 45 million pound program which were which was cut and then he's looking to invest 20 million pounds back in so so we, we've got some really really hard line attitudes towards Muslim women and feminists were absolutely up in arms over this stuff yesterday I know because uh, trending on Twitter was um, the hashtag traditional submissiveness because in one of the uh, articles, I think it was a Telegraph article which talked about Cameron's views, he said, um, a government source said, David knows that the traditional submissiveness of a Muslim woman is a sensitive issue. And I think the problem, Dot, is that this kind of language, this language in which we are couching these debates, mm -hmm. is really, really troubling. Are, are, are we really now saying that rich white men are going to legislate what ethnic minority women and Muslim women should be wearing. I'm not. I'm not sure this is the direction of travel. And, and your previous caller, who, from I'm, I'm really sorry to say, a really, really nasty hard right publication, Breitbart, which is, is very much anti-immigrant and anti-Muslim. Um, you know, that that is not a libertarian view. Libertarian view is about allowing people to choose and, and allowing people to make their own decisions and allowing people individual but, freedoms. But but you know, people are screaming out for David Cameron to do something. Something needs to be done to end segregation, to tackle extremism, and that is what David Cameron is attempting to do here. Yeah, but Dot, the answer to something must be done is is one of these cries, which is very very worrying because when you get into a situation where we're shouting something must be done and we get this hysteria, people stop thinking rationally and stop making mm. sensible decisions. If something needs to be done about extremism and radicalization, then why don't we have a policy and a program that works? I've given lots of interviews, written extensively. I was involved in the counter-radicalization uh, programs in their inception about over 10 years ago, where we looked at programs that worked. And this was about getting to understand your communities, you know, where you live, the people you live around, having grassroots programs where you get to work with people, um, where you get to tackle ideas, you get to meet young people, now, the government then decided, no, actually, do you know what we're going to do? We're going to cut those programmes. We're going to invest in think tanks like the Quilliam Foundation and others who will give us high-level information. And those strategies have been absolutely appalling, over and over again, shown to be broken. So, we have a counter radicalization strategy that doesn't work. It's been widely discredited. The government now needs to move away from that, move away from prevent and look at a new world. The answer to this isn't going after Muslim women. I think it's, it's completely unfair to say to women... Um, and, and actually, let's just take a step back for a second. Are we saying that women, where English isn't their first language, whether you are from Somalia, whether you're from Syria, whether you're from India and Pakistan, or whether you're from Wales, right? Mm. If English isn't your first language, are we suggesting that you can't mother properly? Yeah, but listen, Mohammed, I think, you know, we've, we're straying a bit from the point here. We are asking about the veil in particular. And, even you know, t take everything else aside, right? On a practical level, we're getting texts in this morning about this. This one about, you know, who, how on earth, you know, when we're facing global terrorism, how on earth will you be able to tell or identify who the person you're looking at is? If she's even female, there's there's fear here people are frightened and they want to be able to see the face of who they're dealing with yeah okay i, th I think there's, there's there are some fair points there and i think it's important to address those points dot there is a lot of fear and there is a lot of ignorance there was some research recently that said um three quarters of the british public know little or nothing about islam and two-thirds of the ones that say they do only get their information from the media yeah listen mohammed look there's a text here pat and keradigion asks uh, can you tell us why muslim women cover their faces is it okay. for religious purposes or to please and to conform to their husband's wishes all right let's, let's, let's deal with that okay so um, within Islam, there's a concept called hijab. Now, hijab is about modesty, and it, it, it relates to lots of different parts of your life. It's about how you dress, how you carry yourself, how you speak, lots of different areas of life. Now, in, in, in the uh, Islamic holy texts, in the Quran, it is first prescribed for men, the hijab, and then it's prescribed for women. As part of women's hijab is the head covering. So, 
some women see it as part of their identity, as part of their spiritual journey, as part of their religious empowerment, if you like, to cover the full face veil. Now, I've never met anybody. I work with Muslim communities. I run a charity locally. My wife runs a women's network. Muslim households, actually, are incredibly matriarchal. They're not these bastions of patriarchy where, you know, and, 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 and misogyny. This isn't... These impressions that people are getting are just mm -hmm. based on ignorance and misinformation. They are as much women driven and the ladies wear the pants in the house, I'm telling you, as much as <laughs> as much as in any other household. So. Does your wife wear the pants in your house? Does she, <laughs> is she your boss, I'm guessing? Yeah, yeah, pr pretty much. I do as I do as I'm told, I'm well trained. Because well my, my, my 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 mum is a is a was a Muslim woman. She converted from Christian uh, Christianity, my wife did. My mum is a Muslim woman, she converted from Sikhism. They're both the bosses in their household, and I do as I'm told when I'm around them. So, you know, the 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 idea that somehow Muslim women are traditionally submissive, that they're somehow repressed, that the face veil is a sign of repression. I think that is a complete misnomer. So it's it's really good that you ask the question. It's really good people who are texting and emailing are asking because I think knowledge will go a long way mm -hmm. to helping to demystify this. But the the idea that Muslim women and Muslim mothers are being made a target and and, and just to address one quick issue. Nobody that I've met, none of the Muslim civil society organizations has any objection to Muslim women having to remove the face veil to identify themselves in a court of law, um, maybe within a school, within a bank. There's a, there's a deeper question, which is, can children learn from somebody who is wearing a face veil? I think probably yes. We've got plenty of Muslim schools where people wear the face veil. Those kids are learning absolutely fine. People now learn by um, remote. They learn in, in, in lots of different ways. So I think having a teacher with a face veil, personally, I don't see it as being particularly problematic. I think there is a reasonable case to be made in a court of law. There is a reasonable case to be made for national security purposes. But Muslims themselves say we've got absolutely no problem lifting the veil to identify okay. and then let us go about our business. I think that's very sensible. Mohammed Anza, thank you for joining us on BBC Radio Wales today. Keep your thoughts coming in on this. Is it ever appropriate to ask a Muslim woman to remove her veil? Call me on 03700 100 110.